We're now going to go to an interview with our political analyst, Arnold August, who is joining us from Canada, I believe. Arnold, can you hear me? Yes, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you perfectly. Thank you for joining us. Arnold, what can you say in reaction to the verdict this, in this landmark case this Tuesday? I think uh, I was watching it uh, on CNN, as many other people have been doing. And uh, of course, like everyone else, not only in the United States, um, people from, uh, you know, a, a bl black America, but also whites in America, because some, someone just mentioned when the uh, demonstrations were taking place for justice in favor of George Floyd, it went beyond the blacks, Afro-Americans, even though it was at the center. For example, in such states as Idaho, where there are no blacks, you had demonstrations for uh, Black Lives Matter and uh, against the murder of uh, George Floyd by Chauvin. So this is a, uh, a major uh, event. And it, 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 I think it's everyone feels happy that this is the verdict has come down guilty. At the same time, we have to wait a few days because the judge has yet to take into account other factors, which they consider to be uh, factors that uh, would influence the actual sentence. We have to keep in mind that he's been found guilty on three charges. Uh, none of them are for life sentence. You know, I think it would be good if there was a, a, a charge accusation against him, which would automatically bring him to life sentence, but this is not the case. It's up to 40 years. So really, we have to wait to see what the judge sa says. What is what is he actually going to uh, sentence Chauvin? How many years? How many decades? That's one thing. The other thing is uh, we have to admit that there were the the uh, the events were so clearly. Uh, uh, indicated by cell phones and testimonies during the two weeks of the trial, that this is sort of a special case. You know, it would it would be unthinkable that a jury would have found him not guilty. So it's it's good they found him guilty, but we ha also have to take into account there are many other low profile cases where African Americans are gunned down, and we barely hear about it. They're not, you know, considered to be a high profile case. So I don't think uh, one can be euphoric about it. It's a good step forward. But I don't think uh, that some commentators in CNN were saying euphorically that, oh, now all, all policemen have to think twice before they uh, brutalize uh, African-Americans. And then other police officers should speak out against the, these uh, murders or, or, or violence. I don't think that that this is really going to happen. Uh, in fact, you could even have a backlash because uh, the police force is not something, uh, is not a force that is really in favor of justice. They are defending the status quo. And what they fear most is a, a revolt by the African Americans and their allies across the United States against the system of racism not just justice for one person, the system of racism, which in my view is based on the American state being a vestige of slavery. And it still is. It is that same American state vestige of sla slavery that today found Chauvin guilty on three counts of murder. But the state remains there. And we'll have to see, firstly, what is the actual sentence that's, that's being given? And secondly, uh, what is going to happen? You know, I'm carefully... Uh, looking uh, for the, the points of view of my colleagues in the United States, especially Black Alliance for Peace and others, uh, for their view on what is taking place. Arnold, I'm seeing here uh, various reactions on Twitter. The Black Lives Matter movement has said this isn't proof the system works. It's proof of how broken it is. Somewhat repeating what you're saying there, that while this case, as we know, has drawn international attention, it doesn't mean that there is justice in the United States for African-Americans and uh, in the cases of continued police brutality. Yes, I, could be, I completely agree with that, with that statement. A very good insight by, uh, from our, our colleagues, our comrades in the United States. You know, this was a special case 
a high profile case and it's only part of the overall system and, and you know uh, like one of the cnn commentators was saying that uh, that uh, now uh, we know that we have to uh, reform the police we have to have better police and all that but i don't think one can reform the police as as a, as a as an institution i i more am inclined to support the position of black lives matter uh, movement of the uh, black alliance for peace where they say that we they have to have community control of the police defund the police and the people in the community actually control the police one of the uh, means being to actually win seats win city councils and from there have a mechanism to control the police you know one cannot but be naive about the united states this is the same united states that uh, found chauvin guilty today okay it is the same united states that uses violence against the peoples of the world including in africa and asia there are so many examples iraq afghanistan in latin america it is that same united states that found chauvin guilty today this cannot take an away in any means in my view about the real nature of the state in terms of domestic policy and i think very important its foreign policy is an outgrowth of its domestic policy that is violent, violence against afro americans uh, and, and brown people and in general the working people of the united states is reflected in their aggression all over the world to try and dominate the world with in any way necessary including war so it is an important step but i think one has to continue to analyze it and i think people uh, from other countries so for for example myself in canada to fully support the revolutionary left alternative in the united states which provides a very deep analysis of the american domestic and international uh, system honored the George Floyd's death came in the midst of the presidential campaign in the United States and since we've seen Joe Biden take over office as president. Do you think there is a chance for real change in the United States and do you think Biden is going to bring any of that change? No, I, th I think this may be strange. Uh, you may find my statement a bit strange, but I think there is as much another type of danger coming from Biden rather than Trump and that is Biden and, and and Clinton and and Obama surely and all that there and the vice president uh, Kamala Harris they are going to spread illusions that justice has been done in the United States we can reform the justice system in the United States we can still be a model of democracy all over the world I, you know I wouldn't be surprised maybe I'm wrong but someone from the Biden camp is going to say we are still a a beacon of democracy all over the world because Chauvin was found a uh, guilty. I mean maybe he won't say that but it's going to come out in one way or the other. I mean I know the American political culture uh, quite a bit. So Biden who has a long history of supporting segregation uh, uh, of uh, Kamala Harris herself incarcerating people. You know this goes back a long time and the, the, what what like the main thing in the election campaign I'm glad that you raised it what was the main difference between the two parties the biden camp said trump is not decent we have to have decency has to come back to american politics it just in other words it's just a format it's a way of doing things not the essential issue of uh, of dealing with the uh, problem of, of race which is directly linked to to the class question in the United States of America remember George Floyd it was a, he was a poor guy he was looking around for a, a $20 uh, forfeit uh, you know a, a, a bill to pay to buy something it, it you cannot separate african american the black question from the class question and and you know so this is still uh, the problem that us ruling elites have to deal with in the United States like the it was very clear like this took place as you mentioned during the pandemic okay now the pandemic among other things it, it had the advantage if you like it it peeled away uh, the appearance uh, that uh, the system in the United States could be fixed and a, and a and a simple basic thing 
such as health care for the people. It is very clear in the United States and other capitalist countries, such as Canada, such as in England, that this system cannot deal with the fundamental needs of the people when it comes to something that is so necessary in the lives of the people, and that is health. So, you know, these things are still uh, going to be coming up. The elections took place, Biden won. But the danger with Biden is that through his, uh, as opposed to the indecent Trump, the decent Biden is going to try to undermine the struggle of the people in the United States, African-American, brown, the working people, the youth, the students, undermine that by providing, giving illusions that the system can be reformed. It could be patched up. I don't think this could be patched up. Like this guy Chauvin, he's been trained over a long period of time to be a police officer, you know, and we've seen so many trials that those police officers who have been accused of murder and all that, they all, they went through all kinds of training. They have body cameras and all that, but what did this do? What did this do? It did not change anything. You cannot reform police system, you cannot reform the state. I'm not saying that the only solution is, for example, revolution right now, but a very definite point is the defunding the police and community control of the police. I think that in the long run will be an answer to the attempt of the Biden administration. And I'm sure Barack Obama will also make this speech and we'll hear all these, you know, the, the um, how should we say, the decent face of U.S. imperialism coming on to say, you see, justice can be done in the United States. Why is everybody so pessimistic about American democracy? Why is everyone so pessimist, pessimistic about the issue of race and poverty in the United States? We can fix things. We can still be a model for democracy all over the world. I, I think that this is what is going to come up and is, in my sense, is almost more dangerous than the open, brutal, Trump attack against people because with Trump, at least you knew where he stood. We know he was an open racist, a white supremacist, but Biden doesn't look that way. He looks like the decent guy, you know, and, and this is where the danger comes in, creating illusion about the system at the very time in the history of the United States when it is so clear that there needs to be a change in the whole overall system domestically and internationally. I really res have respect for, for example, Black Alliance uh, for Peace and others. They are the ones, even though they are uh, uh, facing the brunt of the attack of the American state, they are the first ones in the United States to say, wait, we cannot just deal with the oppression, the killing of our brothers and sisters, Afro-American Afro brothers and sisters. We also have to link that to what the United States does, for example, in Africa, controlling Africa through AFRICOM, Iraq and Afghanistan, what they are doing against the Palestinian people. So I think that that this new left revolutionary movement in the United States is going to become even more popular. But in any case, whether it's popular or not, I think we have to listen to what they have to say, where they say we have to link the domestic uh, situation uh, with the international system, uh, situation. Violence is ingrained in the American state, both domestically and internationally. And we're, this goes back over three centuries from the very beginning of the American uh, state, when it even was 13 colonies, supposedly established, establishing itself to be a beacon on the hill for uh, the people of the world. Now, not one politician, whether it's a Republican or Democrat, and the so-called uh, AOC, the uh, you know the so-called left wing of the Democratic Party, they do not challenge that basic feature of the United States of American exceptionalism as the United States as a beacon on the hill for the peoples of the world. That is the basic uh, problem, and the uh, American people, the youth. African Americans, students, and women, they are in an uphill battle. But if they take this on, they will make world history. Arnold, thank you so much for joining us again today. Thank you for offering your insight and for pointing out there the historic roots of racism and discrimination in the United States. A long struggle ahead despite this verdict in this landmark case. Thank you for joining us, Arnold. And